Uh, hello everyone, welcome back to the engine lab here in the pillbox on the rocky coast of Maine, and this is Roger, Bork Engine TV. Uh, right in front of you now, you're looking at the prototype engine, which has been, since uh, two years now has been down for various things and uh, is in a running condition. I know everybody wants to see those videos running test results and everything else, but not the purpose for this video. Okay, still here. The purpose for this video is this article. And it's by Reuters in High Stakes, High Cost Battle Among Global Automakers to Develop Ever More Efficient Vehicles. They're claiming a big breakthrough. Mazda Motors zoom past larger global rivals to develop engine which ignites gasoline using combustion ignition technology. Fuel saving process considered something of a holy grail of efficient gasoline engines. Okay, where have I heard that before? 30% fuel efficiency increase over its Sky Active G engine, already one of the most fuel efficient. Our sources, resources are limited, they say. Well, <laughs> try being an independent researcher. At least you've got uh, engineers on your side, and uh, they're betting on this technology. No matter what, we would. Uh, no matter what, we would develop this engine. So they've uh, got wind of the HCCI, homogeneous charge compression ignition. They know there's something to it, and this is something we heard with the Bork project for a long time and also in conjunction with videos I put on the internet as much as 15 years ago demonstrating it, engines running with the ignition off. Um, and they say the latest technology vari variant of a homogeneous charge combustion ignition technology, a variant they say, which marries clean burning qualities of the gasoline engine. Uh, the gasoline engines that need catalytic converters, those clean burning engines, okay, and the fuel economy and grunt of a diesel. Okay, Pre -ti precise timing is required, solving the multiple variables required to balance performance with successful compression ignition was a challenge so complex and frustrating that there were countless times the team wanted to throw in the towel, Hitomi said. Wow, very interesting. Cost-effective way to control the HCCI process, which requ requires precise timing. Okay, and uh, simple solution, facilitate sparkless ignition. Use a spark plug to light a high-pressure fireball inside the chamber. Okay, so it's not really totally sparkless. Control the process control by precisely monitoring each movement in a combustion chamber, enabling visibility of when the intake valve allows air to be drawn into the chamber and when the fireball is ignited. Okay, while well, they're getting cheers for taking the next step, and they say here HCCI technology to develop smaller turbocharge engines. Uh, the automaker is uh, not developing a full system at the moment due to cost concerns and they call it a monster engine, and I thought was this going to be for performance. <laughs> As it turns out, it had so many parts to it, like separate controls for variable valve timing, intake exhaust levels, and what has become monster of an engine too costly to produce, he said. And down here, in-cylinder sensors uh, to monitor combustion process, high-pressure fuel system, create optimal fuel mix, and supercharger. Okay, supercharger they need. Uh, efficiency gains may be limited compared to hybrids and even longer term potential benefits of EVs, which is good, but the fuel's got to come from somewhere. The rotating shaft is not dead. We just have to do it right. Automaker could win over customers looking for an inexpensive fuel saving option, which does not require battery re recharging. And what I'm going to say in the uh, internal combustion engine um, isn't dead. Um, now to go over to the proto engine and the work I've been doing with uh, Russell Bork. Um, the deal is here, uh, I don't have, I can, I can do HCCI 100% of this time after about a two-minute warm-up period, all right? My water temperature is around 170 degrees Fahrenheit. It likes that, 170, 180, and it likes up to 400 degrees cylinder head temperature. Air-cooled cylinder head, you want a good hot head to induce that. And the way I get the super lean mixture is going through the Tillotson carburetor, which gives me... Uh, variable uh, needles, which I can get the fuel mixture to where I want it. 
and on these particular carburetors here, normally the, the go setting on these is one and a half turns high and low. And right now I'm running about a half turn on the idle speed and the uh, uh, top speed's only open a, about a half a turn. And then they talk about cost and simplicity and all that kind of stuff. Well, they're doing it with a whole bunch of electronics and I'll give them credit for even uh, acknowledging HCCI. I'll give them a lot of credit for that. Uh, but the fact is they're preempted. Yes, 75 years ago, a guy named Russell Bork was exploring this very same theory, and I don't think that he knew he was actually doing the HCCI process. And the reason why I know that is because I have been running his original engines, okay, of which I have three. And with the original engines, and it came with a two-to-one gearbox, and uh, I was always in... Well, I'm just curious, simple as that. I find out the best I could get them to go and want to duplicate what Russ said. Wasn't easy. There's no instruction book. There's no manual. There's nobody tapping on the back and say, hey, you're doing this wrong. So what I had to do was rely on my uh, knowledge as a lifelong mechanic and also as a commercial pilot, and I've had a lot of engine experience. That's how I actually learned about detonation. But what these guys at Mazda has to know, have to know is that what we have here is not so much an engine that, you know, that will uh, do this. It's, a, it's an apparatus that Bork thought up in his head. But the idea is he came up with the HCCI concept. And, okay, we tried to take that a little bit further. I found some things I wasn't happy with. And I've run all three of his uh, engines that I have and taken test measurements and all of that. Not fooling around, getting all the readings, all the data and things that I need. Granted, could be better, but not bad for homemade. And Bork will do this. I can get this up into HCCI. And there, there's videos out there you can see on the web. I, 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 I got to edit them and, 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 and get it more coherent presentation. But the fact is that Russ Bork was absolutely right. Okay, uh, I can run this thing completely. Spark plug's turned off completely. As a matter of fact, in one video, which I'll try to get that clip on there, uh, the spark plug wire actually fell off completely. Okay, they talk about uh, ignition failures in ultralight aircraft. Okay, great. Best way to get around that is to not depend on the ignition at all. When you're running HCCI and uh, you're, say, within temperature ranges and such, you will experience the benefits of HCCI with no electrical inputs at all. The only thing I'm using to start this machine is a couple of off-the-shelf pickups, a homemade magnet, all right, and a couple of coils down here. High-tension coils. They draw a little bit. They're uh, flamethrowers. And those get me up and running and started. And uh, just a simple timing device on the front here, manually operated, okay. So, like I say, that my hat's off to those guys. Um, Gee whiz, they shouldn't say it's the holy grail. They really shouldn't because uh, if I'm a guy in my garage here and uh, can uh, get this thing to do HCCI 100% of the time, all right, in a multi-fuel environment also, I've been running uh, up as much as one-third diesel fuel. Usually it likes the uh, non-leaded type, uh, excuse me, undoctored type fuels with the least amount of additives, i.e. lowest octane which we've been getting up from around the Great Lakes in Michigan, which is called camp, camp fuel. And I'm getting great results with that. And we're mixing about two parts camp fuel and one part diesel. And going through a carburetor. Yeah, it will draw through there. And I had to do some scrambling. You've got to do some adjustments to accommodate the density of the fuel. But it is possible. And I'm going to see how far I can go with the diesel before I get uh, inadequate atomization to it. There's other ways to do it, too. The original engines came with glow plugs. And there are a lot of criticism out there. You're not this, and this is not that, and you're not detonating and charging, whatever. But I'll stand by what I'm finding in my results right here. I've got really good quality test equipment, and I know the temperatures, and I know how to control it, and I've been running it long enough. And um, i got to stand up for Russ Bork, because even though Mazda's turning on to it now. They, they, no business coming out saying it's the Holy Grail. I'm sorry. If any of these guys involved in this article would like to come and see this and actually run it with me, I'd be more than happy to accommodate them. 
been doing this for a long time and I've been really keeping it low lately but the deal is uh, the old vet here has got a, uh, a reason to uh, put the bucket list in gear let me see if I can get up some more video here to get the bucket list in gear and uh, reasons for that and um, I think now it's time to just go ahead and uh, double down on this as my son would say and this is uh, some 8 millimeter Is obviously not one of my better runs, but the deal is uh, you got to go ahead and crawl before you're going to walk, you know. And what I would really like to have is get somebody's interest in this so we can get this thing into an ultralight or some kind of vehicle. So I'll tell you, it puts out. It's scary. That's why in that article they said monster. <laughs> By monster they meant complexity. Okay, so I'm just telling you guys at Mazda and all the engineers and things like that, and I don't want to one-up anybody, but the fact of the matter is that Russell Bork started this whole ball rolling in 1933. This is 75-year-old technology. On the original Bork engine, the number one sold to the public, one that I own, there was no kill button on there. You could just uh, retire the magneto enough so the engine wouldn't run. Okay, so when Bork was running these things, I don't know if he knew he was actually doing HCCI, and this is why this is fascinating to me. Because the guy was in territory that he saw and he got into and had a hard time, a hard time trying to transmit this to anybody else because he wound up in a, a point in history where uh, his, his product, uh, an outboard motor engine, um, the industry was flat in its back. Korean War, recession. Brilliant, brilliant man, and just uh, at the wrong time. Here's the exhaust ports right here, if anybody's noticed. I run wide open port, and I don't have light, but if you look down in there, yeah, you can see the pistons. You can see the pistons in there, okay? And this makes it very good for me. Um, of course, you don't want to drop anything down there. But it makes it very good to see if I'm ejecting any kind of oil, smoke, or stuff like that. And with a Bork engine, you're not going to get any smoke, period. You're going to get a very, very good combustion because it has the capability to burn a very, very, very lean charge. And not just by, um, not just by um, uh, the um, electronics, uh, as I say. It, it isn't by any electronics. Get it up to temperature, turn it off. She'll just, you just keep on turning all day and just hum like crazy. It's just wonderful. And I want to take it a step further. And I, I would just like to see uh, the, uh, the, the real holy grail. And it was handed by Russ Bork to anybody who would pick it up. Okay, uh, simple as that. It's on my bucket list. And to be perfectly honest, sometime uh, I might need a little bit of help because uh, it's not easy. I don't have engineers. I don't have staff. I'm lucky I got a roof over my head, so at least I can't complain. <laughs> but I have been around for a while, and that's the progress in it. I hope this isn't too long-winded. But uh, I'm going to give it a try and uh, upload it and see what happens. So the deal that I'm looking for now, i got to find a better output. The belts are no good. I'm overspeeding it. I'm turning 11, 12,000 RPM, and it's just throwing it. But actually, the belts turn upside down, which I've never seen before. And my ratios are wrong because this was a temporary setup just to get the uh, new cylinders up and running again. So I got to mate it to the, uh, the big pig, I call it, the 24,000 watt Chinese generator with a Lovejoy coupling. And so anyway, uh, there you go, Mazda guys. Uh, I just wanted to record straight, uh, yeah, you want to come and stick your probes in my engine, you can do it. And uh, I'd be happy to... I'd be happy to uh, have that, and I'd be even happier if you would examine this, and uh, let's get it plugged into some dynamometer to get some real engine lab test work done on it. That would be wonderful. But anyway, um, very happy to uh, be able to be in a position to put up another uh, a video, and I'm just gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go in there just like my son said, double down, and thank you to John in West Virginia for uh, sending me the 
article on that and uh, anybody else that has uh, contributed. Thank you.